Hello, friend, friends, welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel for those of you who are new. So in today's new video, I have a very, very special guest. She is my soulmate. She is my one and only. She's the love of my life. My bestie, Lauren. So we are doing it virtually today just because um, one, we live like 30 minutes away from each other and two, um, yeah, we just live 30 minutes away from each other. So, <laughs> so we decided to do it virtually. So you're gonna see her like on the screen somewhere all around the screen and then obviously it's gonna be me like talking. But yeah, so in today's new video, we are going to be talking about some of our drunk stories and drunk moments that her and I have had together. Mind you, we have had a lot to say the least. <laughs> some of them great, some of them not so great. But we are gonna talk about our three favorite stories. If you guys wanna hear about our stories, keep on watching. So I'm gonna be like looking at the camera and then like I have her right here like FaceTiming me. So like it's gonna be kind of like going between just to let you guys know. But the first story is, what is the, our first story? Uh -oh. oh, also we have, order. I mean, we can go kind of in order. Also guys, we have like, I have wine and she has a white claw. So we're definitely, cheers, cheers to our story time. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we can go in order, honestly. I think Lauren's gonna have to tell all of this story because I do not remember it. I do not remember this night and this is gonna be the most embarrassing moment of my entire life. So I pass it to you, Lauren. Embarrass me all you want. All right. Cheers. So, I love this story, but let's make it as, you know, to the point as possible. So there was a day when Francisco and I got off of work and we said, we're going to go home like good kids and go to bed. Well, no, we went to Tejas first, remember? I know. Oh. I'm getting to that part. That was the beginning <laughs> of the night. We sorry. Go sorry. Go on. Go on. We're going to go home. I was going to go to the gym. He was going to go home. We we're going to go to sleep. We weren't going to drink. It was going to be fine. But then, for some reason, we both just decided we're going to go to Tejas, which is our neighborhood bar by our work. And so we did. We popped in there. We said, one drink. One drink turned into two drinks. And two drinks turned into, let's go out. And, you know, that sounded like a great idea. So I said, bet, meet me at my apartment. We will pregame. Let's call our other friends. We'll call our other friends. <laughs> what will we call him? Juan. Juan. <laughs> So we said, okay, we're gonna go out with our other friend called Juan, who said he was in, went to my apartment, pre-game on some box wine, ate some lasagna. Let me just say that like I made this lasagna for the whole entire week for my work because I wanted to like meal prep and I was God, I spent so much time cooking this beautiful lasagna. It was great, it was beautiful. And because I'm a good friend, Francisco was allowed to have at least three pieces. You know, I was like, okay, that's good. I used to have enough for work. No worries, I'm a great friend. Anyway, so Juan picked us up, <laughs> and uh, Francisco made a really bad drink, which consisted of plastic bottle vodka, which is always, no, don't do that. But anyway, Never do that. because he made such a bad drink and it was so strong, he was forced to drink the whole thing. <laughs> but he was forced to drink a water bottle full of vodka on top of the box wine, on top of the margaritas. On top and of the fire, to the bar yet. on top of the fireball shots too. On top of the fireball shots. This is drink number, let's let's score it in at two margaritas, two glasses of boxed wine, three fire. I, hold on, I also had your rosé, remember? Yeah, and I'm really mad at you because that was an expensive and a gift. I bought it for you though. Okay, and then, so we're at nine drinks before we chugged a whole water bottle full of straight vodka. <laughs> that's called us 13 or 14 or maybe 25 drinks before we get to the bar. You <laughs> don't ever want to pregame that hard, but okay. Done. It's over. So then we get into the bar. And, the first bar. Uh, the we'll first bar. Skip, we'll just skip the first bar. Okay. It's nice well, I had a drink the at the first bar. bar. What? I had the tequila sunrise at the first bar. Okay. You know what? That's the... Whatever. It doesn't really matter. A lot. That bar was like super lame, and because I took my mask off on the table before I ordered my drink, they told me I needed to leave. So we had That's to true. So that bar is relevant. Thanks, bar. That's the first bar in the first story. Not as fun. That wasn't as fun. So we hop to a place that we like to call Oakland. It is the, the haven of all things terrible and great. Yes. Um, lots of good and bad memories. Anyway, <laughs> so we get to Oakland. 
we go to this bar, and it's Christmas time, so they're doing a Christmas show in the middle of the floor. It's fun. Everyone's dancing. Everyone's having a good time. From what I can remember, it was fun. Except for you. Yeah. When we got there, you said, I don't get why we're here. Like, I just don't get why we're here. So I said, because it's fun. Can I just say this? Can I just say this real quick? So, when the only thing I remember about, what, like, at this bar, like, I remember everything up until walking into this bar, paying the cover, and that's all I remember. Like it wasn't like the cover was ridiculous. No. You were really pissed about that $5. You were like, I don't get why we had to pay for this. So, anyway, resuming the story. Juan and I had a great time. We were just chilling at the table. We were talking to boys. Just, you know, having a good old bar time. Meanwhile, Francisco was sitting at the bar and he made a friend. Because him and his friend were some for some reason wallowing in this pity. And Francisco kept saying, No one likes me and you don't get it. So I said I'm leaving. So I left for a while and then I came back to check on him, you know, making sure he's still there. He was, and his friend seemed pretty cool. I talked to her earlier. And I looked at her and she looked really sad, so I said, Are you okay? And she starts sobbing uncontrollably. And Francisco starts sobbing, and they both start yelling at me, you just don't get it. You just don't get it, do you? And I was like, no, I don't get it. So I proceeded to leave again, you know, keeping, keeping an eye on him so he doesn't die or get kidnapped, watching him cry from a distance because I'm in a bar, so I'm trying to have fun. And I kept saying, we should go home. And he said, no, I don't want to go home. In this situation, so uh, then I, I tried to make him a friend. He held that friend to, to the bar, sobbed on his shoulder. Friend was a little traumatized, and then um, I finally got him to go home. So we go home. We're in the Uber. No, it wasn't the Uber. Juan took us home. Remember? Same thing. Francisco sat in the back seat and cried the way home, whole way home. I don't know how you'd had any tears left in your body, but you did. And we talked awkwardly the whole way home, and you know, we were having a great time, having a normal conversation, but really uncomfortable by the fact that Francis was sobbing silently <laughs> into his Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> Not the Louis Vuitton bag. And then Juan decided he didn't want to be involved in the situation anymore. He said, I'm, I'm leaving. And um, he left. He left me with this psycho. Proceeded, <laughs> I, I, he was still crying, so I was like, You can sleep in my house. You're obviously very intoxicated. Set him up on the couch. Went to the bathroom, was gone for five minutes, taking off my makeup, you know. Come back into my kitchen and come to the scene of the crime. There is <laughs> no lasagna somehow. From remember there was like three fourths of pan? Yes. With no lasagna left in the pan. Half of it was on my carpet while Francisco stood over the said lasagna. Drinking out of my teapot, because I guess he couldn't find a water cup in the cabinet, so he just took a teapot and poured that to his mouth. And I said, <laughs> and then I lost it. Let's just say that. Let's just say I started screaming. I couldn't take it anymore, I know. But that was all of my lasagna for the week, and it was all over my floor and consumed. <laughs> it took me so long to cook it, and I didn't get any of it. So I lost my mind. I started screaming at Francisco. And obviously that triggered the crying reaction. And then that triggered gathering several Louis Vuitton bags and trying to leave my house. And I spent hours, hours holding my door closed <laughs> so that he wouldn't leave while he crying screamed that I didn't get in. He was leaving. And I needed to get the away. He was leaving. So I laid by the door. I had to go to the bathroom. I finally got him to go back on the couch. Then when I came back from the bathroom, he was trying to leave again. But luckily, I had jingle bells on my door, so I heard it. So I ran out of the bathroom. And I locked the door, and he said, I can pick you up. And I said, I'd like to see that happen. And it didn't happen, because he died. And then I slept by the door. And he slept on the couch, and I went to bed. And we never talked again. <laughs> <laughs> As we're on FaceTime. <laughs> yes. That was the end of our friendship. I don't know who that person was. <laughs> <laughs> that story traumatized me so much. That story traumatized me. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but like that's, at least it wasn't embarrassing for you. <laughs> well, I'll send, this, I'll have some receipts for my steak carpet, which if you were wondering, the red sauce did never come out. And I'm owed a new carpet, I'm pretty 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure you are owed a new carpet, but I can't afford it because I'm a broke bitch. So. <laughs> Honestly, do that, and then we can just buy more Louis Vuitton. Sure, sure. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, to say the least, that one was not my proudest moment. By no means was it my proudest moment. Uh, definitely, I've like been, I've, I've cried when I, I, well, I really haven't cried. I've gone to like arguments <laughs> with my parents when I'm drunk, or more so my mom. But I've never cried like that at a bar. So when that happened. It was not my proudest moment, to say the least. Definitely <laughs> one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. But I'm glad that I did it in front of my best friend so that she could at least take care of me so that I did not embarrass myself even more so. Nevertheless, final story that I will expose myself as well as my bestie on is going to be one, actually this one actually, like I want to end on a good note and this story honestly ended on a good note, I think. It definitely ended on like, I feel like a good note. It started off a very rocky night, but like it ended on a, a very- <laughs> Oh, none of these stories are appropriate. <laughs> really not, honestly. Um, but it ended on a really high note. So like the night like started off like, it honestly started off kind of normal. I like went, I went home that night and I went to go get margaritas at like a local, like, you know, whatever, like fuzzies or whatever. And Lauren went out with some friends to like, it was like, uh, what? Oh, it was, it was the- It was Super Bowl Sunday. So I went out with a couple friends and we got, you know, lit on some ranch waters as you do. And our other half of the friend group liked. And I ended up with one of my friend's friends. I didn't really know him. And I was like, everyone look, wanna come hang out with me? And he said yes. And so I hopped in my car, not intoxicated, only one ranch water, just to say that. And then I went to Oakland and I called Francisco and I said, I know you wanna go out, so go ahead. Well, it wasn't so much that I know you wanna go out, it was more like, can you come save me, please? True, but also I know you wanted to go out. <laughs> I did wanna go I out. I called Juan, Juan is also involved in that story. Yeah. And he's yes, and they both came to my rescue. Uh, no, it wasn't at Oaklawn. We weren't at Oaklawn yet, though. Happiest it was, hour. Yeah, it was first happiest hour, which is like they a- They met us at happiest hour, and we sat on the balcony and had some drinks, and that's where the night began. It was pretty, pretty normal, pretty good. It was like super chill, honestly, like nothing too crazy. Um, it's like, I feel like every other night that like, you know, we've ever had, it just kind of like started off like that. But then, <clears throat> <clears throat> Lauren ingested some saw a drink that she should not have ingested to say the least and Juan also ingested this drink although Juan was not affected Juan enjoyed this drink but had a fun reaction yeah he had a very fun reaction Lauren on the other hand had a uh, wanted to take a nap and go home yeah, she really wanted to take a nap, go home. Um, she said that she was sinking into the couch type of reaction. Eating me. But you know, that happens sometimes when you sit on the couch for a long time. It does, I will give you that. I really do give you that. Um, but so it was definitely not a great reaction. So then um, our friend Juan still wanted to go out. So then somehow. And I said, Juan, I want to go home, please. And he said, one more bar. And I said, that's fair, you drove all the way down here. Let's go to one more bar and then you take me home. And he said, awesome, let's do that. So then we found ourselves at the place that I dread to go the most. The Rainbow Road. Yes, the Rainbow Road, Oaklawn. Uh, I had not been there since my last incident, if you remember the last story that I just said, or we just said. Um, so it was definitely a little bit of a PTSD moment to say the least, <clears throat> but it actually was a great night. I made some friends several friends, we and then we were leaving. We're standing outside the bar, and me and Francisco were very, very, very awake, even though it was two in the morning. Awake and aware. Yeah, just like vigilant. And we were like, we don't want to go home. And I was like, do you want to go home? And he was like, no. And I was like, me neither. I am going to go talk to strangers and see what all these people, because it was like a crowd of people that happens when the bar closes and everyone's like, gotta leave. So there's all these strangers and I go up to a group of girls. I'm like, what are y'all doing after this? You know, I'm like, that's right. And they're like, oh, home. And I was like, okay, on to the next group. And I see these two guys and they're standing together. They look nice. So I was like, hey guys, what are you doing after this? And they're like, oh, we're going back to our hotel. And I was like, okay, what hotel? And they were like, the W, which is a really <laughs> nice hotel. But I was like, oh, cool. That's a really nice hotel. And I just kind of stood there and they said, do you want to come? And I was like, oh yeah. Like I didn't even, I didn't even think of that, but like, yes, <laughs> I would love to come. Can also 
until my friends come. And so they were like, yeah. So they said, this is our black Uber, our black our black car Uber. Like, or oh, uh, it, was, it wasn't like Uber X or, no, Uber, Uber X. It was, yeah, it was like an Uber, it was an Uber black. I yeah. It was, it was a really nice sedan for the two of them, like this huge, cushy Uber. So I jump in the car because as you do when you meet strangers outside of a bar, you just get in the car. Yeah. And Francisco had a good eye on me and he just followed me. And then our other friend came too. And then the random girl that I had talked to earlier was like, I was like, get in the car. And she was like, okay. <laughs> because people are just willing to get in cars with strangers on Opal. Like, okay. Well, I will say this though. In Dallas, something that like we should like put a silver lining over. Typically, if like you meet people in Dallas and they invite you to Uber or something, you never really say no, especially if it's like an Uber black or like, you know, it's like a luxury it vehicle. It seems to be safer, but additionally, I was with three, two boys and a girl and there was only two of them. So I was like, this seems okay. Yeah, so it, that's like a disclaimer. If you're alone, do not do it. But if you're with a group of people, I always recommend to do you're it. You're in Dallas and you get good vibes. You might be murdered still. We're not saying that you should do this. True. I know it's actually, we're not saying that. But we just happen to <clears> not be murdered because people in Dallas seem pretty. Pretty That's decent. But I don't know. It's not a murdery area. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> not a good way to explain it. But you get the point. We we felt good vibes. And the vibes were looked truly good. So, on the car, tried by alcohol because, you know, as you do at 2 in the morning, you want to drink more because we were all, you know, a little drunk. And the Uber driver dropped us off at a gas station, but it was two in the morning, so they were with alcohol. But then the Uber driver said, oh, I'm sorry, were you guys trying to buy alcohol? And I said, yeah, but it's two. And he goes, oh, why didn't you tell me? And he pushes a magical button in his console. Insert video oh, here. Comes. We need the money to yeah, buy it. Money. Yeah. Insert the video, beautiful lights, shining on <laughs> several little bottles. Every kind of liquor you could possibly ever need. And everyone said, oh my god, a miracle. <laughs> and we all picked which alcohol we wanted. We all got our little individual bottles. And we were off to the W back on road again. Yes, and so then we get to the hotel or whatever. And honestly, we go up to the room. I draw, I had like a duffel bag with me and like a bunch of my bags just because I was staying with Lauren that night. Yeah, it, it, yeah, not my smartest moment to have a Louis Vuitton duffel, but you know, it happens. Uh, anyway, so I drop my stuff off and then we like go down, like, we're gonna go to the pool, but the pool was closed. So then we're like, oh, well, like, let's just walk around Dallas. So then we're like, yeah. So then we start walking around Dallas and then Lauren realizes that she left her phone in the Uber. And then the Uber was so freaking nice that he came back, dropped off her, the phone where he dropped us off. That was off. at the end of the night too. That was like 4 a.m. Yeah, it was like at 4 a.m. The, the guy still was awake and everything. So he was super nice. First. Huh? He went to the park first. Yeah, oh, I forgot about that. So then before Lauren realized her phone was gone, we went to the park at like some random park. I don't even know which park it was, honestly. It actually wasn't a park. It was a place called Happiest Hour, but it was closed. And the people that we were with said they knew the owner, so we crawled under the fencing area. They knew the owner. This is an illegal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was outside too. We didn't break into this bar. Exactly. The patio, park, public area. And we so, all sat down, three people on each side, and then we cracked open all of our mini bottles of alcohol, and we siphoned them out. And we proceeded to tell our life stories one by one. Yeah. And then, like, after that, that's when Lauren realized she didn't have her phone. Uber came, driver came back. And then, honestly, like, Lauren and I just kind of, like, sobered up uh, because we stopped drinking for, like, a, I think, like, two hours. We hadn't been drinking for, I think. So and, and we realized we were tired. Yeah, and so then we, we went, both had to work. Or I had to work the next day. Which we both had to work. We both had to work. About to four in the morning when you have to work the next day. Yeah, don't, don't do that. that. I felt terrible. It was Sorry. a terrible next morning, but... Definitely a fun experience that I am not willing to trade in for the world, especially with my bestie. Definitely an experience that I loved. That park bench was a magical moment. <clears throat> it really was, honestly. Here's that I will never forget. Shout out to those strangers whose names I can't remember and don't need to say on video, even if I did. But I hope you guys are doing great because you guys were some amazing people. And I'm so glad that we got to talk about your lives. Because no, literally. And I hope I get to see you guys one day. If yeah. I never see them again, I will hold on to that for my whole life. So. Me too. 
moment. Me too. Well, that's going to be it for today's new video. I hope you guys enjoyed some of our drunken stories. We definitely have more, but we are not going to expose ourselves that much. Nevertheless, if you guys want to see more of me, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button down below as well as hit that bell icon so you know when I upload brand new videos. A huge thank you to my bestie, Lauren. Thank you for coming on to the day's video. I love you so much and I cannot wait to have you on the next video. And tell us some of your drunk stories down in the comments below. I love drunk stories. They are the most, like the best when you can remember them, of course. But I love you guys so, so, so much. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for 118 subscribers. I hope to see you guys grow even more. I love you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one. And y'all have a great night. Bye, y'all.